I grew up in Revelstoke, British Columbia. I didn't have a lot of adversity as a kid, other than being the smallest kid in town. My family was really close. You know, we didn't have a lot materialistically, but no one cared. There was just a lot of love. I loved hockey. I was good, but I wasn't that good. I had to fight my way literally into junior hockey as a fourth line fighter. To say pro hockey wasn't on my radar is a huge understatement. One night, just before my 20th birthday, my life changed. There was a gas and fire accident and I basically blew up, uh, for lack of a better term. I don't know how long I was on fire for, too long, and I just remember rolling around, panicking, and the fire just wouldn't subside. I woke up in Vancouver General Hospital the next day. 40% of my body was burnt, second and third degree burns. I was told my career was over, not that I you know, had a promising hockey career. I wasn't drafted, I had no scholarship, and no one really knew who I was. The next year was filled with indescribable pain. I was depressed, defeated, multiple surgeries, treatments. I didn't know what to do, I, I was lost. And, you know, through that adversity, I fortified this extreme grit and determination. I refused to let that beat me. I refused to let my dream of an NCAA scholarship slip away. You can't play hockey, I was told. The skin grafts will be too limiting. The risk of infection is going to be too high. You won't be able to sweat properly. You're going to be in a full body suit for two years. The pain's going to be way too extreme, and the damage is just too severe. What did I say? I said, watch me. No one believed me. They all thought it was crazy. My body was begging me to stop, and everyone said, listen to your body, listen to your body. I chose to listen to my mind. I visualized my own outcome every single day. That's when I went to work. The rehab, the training was intense. And I never gave up. And that's the part of the story that people don't understand or they don't know about, they don't know what I went through and what I did, you know, the things that most people wouldn't even think to do. And that's how I obtained my scholarship to Brown University. And that was my NHL. At this point, pro hockey still wasn't on my radar. But then I thought, you know, I've come this far, why can't I make the NHL? And that's when I decided that I would. After my four years at Brown University, I signed with the Vancouver Canucks. I made it. Well, Cheryl Deeks looks real good. Oh, here we go. Well, Patty dropped Winchester with a right hand. A one-punch knockdown for Aaron Volpatti. Behind the defense. Blast with a hard hit. They step on the puck. Volpatti scores. First career goal. Celebrate the goal. Don't just go to the bench and celebrate the goal. And then I had to prove myself again. I had to work my way up, go back to my fighting roots. That's how I became a full-time NHLer. I spent a few years in Vancouver with the Canucks and then another few years in Washington with the Capitals. Well, Patty in a wrestling match. No. Well, Patty steals. Well, Patty shoots. He scores. Aaron Volpatti on a puck popped up the net. Well, Patty is flattened. Well, Patty knows he's in trouble. But while playing for the Washington Capitals, my career was cut short. One night I was hit from behind into the boards and right away I knew something was wrong. Luckily I didn't break my neck, but I needed surgery. And of all the injuries and surgeries I'd had previously, this is the one that forced me to retire. Everything I'd worked so hard for up to this point was taken away. My identity was gone. My life post-retirement took me down a very dark path. Adversities and struggles, they were relentless. It was just one thing after another. I kept asking why. Why me? But here's the thing. My greatest accomplishments in life have only been possible because of the struggles. The adversity, it was all a gift. It helped me become unstoppable. <laughs>